What's Hot in Tucson 2021, day nine of eight. We just saw some incredible specimens when we just visited our friends out in Milano, MCP. They showed us some incredible things, but now we're going to head back to the United States and we're going to go to Beacon, New York, and we've got Dylan Stolowitz from Green Mountain Minerals up on deck ready to share some incredible pieces with us also. So with that, we'd like to welcome Dylan to the show. Lauren, it's all yours. <laughs> uh, good to see you, Dylan. Oh, we got a Peter McGaw back. Good to see you. How are you doing? And what have you been up to now that you're doing young? Great. Doing great, Lauren. Good to see you too. Um, well, we were pleased to announce the, and, and honored to announce the Mark Pospisil Mineral uh, Collection. We just purchased it. And uh, he was a collector for 40 years. Many of you know him in the hobby as just a wonderful person. Um, he loaned minerals to many museums and fostered many collectors into the hobby. Just a great guy all around. So we're gonna share some of his, some of the highlights from this collection. Fantastic, yeah, he's, he's always a hoot and a half to talk to and uh, look forward to seeing what, what you've got and some of the highlights that you can show us. Well, he collected large cabinet minerals, uh, mainly uh, cabinet as well, but also had some very fine miniatures scrolled away for many years. So he had everything. Um, so we're going to we're going to do a little bit of everything today. Sounds good. Uh, I'm going to read a little quote uh, from that Johann Kentman wrote over 400 years ago to his good friend, Conrad Gessner, uh, translated by Wendell Wilson. Consequently, when I'm absorbed in thought about minerals, Time crumbles away swiftly, and my investigations begin with zeal. Um, you know, over the centuries and even the millennia, something doesn't change. Minerals being one, and also men and women's love, passion, and fascination of them. So, you guys ready to look at some rocks? Uh, yeah. Ready, is, is, right. the, is the bear a Catholic? <laughs> Here we go. We're going to start with a smoky and Amazonite from the Lucky Monday pocket that Joe Doris and his family found. Um, they nicknamed it the behemoth. It's the largest single smoky quartz ever recovered with Amazonite. And it's truly, truly, truly an outrageous specimen. The color. A little bit yes. closer to it so it fills the screen. Yeah. So how tall is that, Dylan? It's about uh, three and a half inches tall, four inches max. I put my hand in for size. Oh, there we go. The termination is so sharp. Oh, the quality of the of the quartz, the luster, the uh, the, the color, the amazonite. Um, so by by leaps and bounds, this is the biggest one they've ever found. And uh, you know, Joe won the. Heritage Award last week, and we can see why finding specimens of this caliber. Oh yeah! What a wonderful family! What a wonderful family! They really are. He's a he's a real class act. We're actually going to have him on Mineral Talks Live um, next Wednesday. So oh, that's fantastic. Talk more with Joe or hear more of his story. Tune in. That's Wednesday, uh, the seventeenth, I believe it is. All right, let's stay in Colorado right now. And we're going to go over to uh, Cameron Cone, where, where the Doris family found these incredible topazes, champagne, an unbelievable color. And, and the crystal size is amazing as well. Oh, yeah. The pink undertone, too. It's ab they're absolutely beautiful. We're, those are the ones they were calling apricot. I, I, I don't know what they were calling them. They might have been calling them apricot. I think so. God, those um, are so They brought a really nice exhibit of those uh, one year. It was fun working with Crystal, who was quite nervous about the possible thermal effects of the lights on the cases and everything. And we were able to, to keep everything under control so that uh, the specimens uh, didn't suffer from being on exhibit. That's and wonderful. Able to be they here. are. They're light sensitive, so you gotta you gotta be very conscious yep. of where you display them. Um, Mark bought 
minerals from a woman in the early 90s. Her name was Norma Scala. And this is a barite stalactite with gorgeous sulfur crystals. Mm. So he's had this piece for a very long time. And it's, it's a fabulous thing. It's from Machau, Poland. The sulfur looks like Jimmy's on an ice cream cone. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It gives it sort of a punk rock attitude. Mm -hmm. There you go. So that's a fun piece right there. Mm -hmm. Another piece is this heart twin calcite from China. Mm -hmm. Nice, large, gorgeous twin. Chris. Yeah, and moving along, this is from Vermont, which I happen to love, uh, these gorgeous little garnets mm, on Tilly diopside. Foster. Yeah. Mm. Those are no, sweet. not Tilly Foster, Eden it's Mills. Not? Oh, sorry, that's right, Eden Mills, yes, yes, of course. Yeah. One of those was on our poster one year. Lovely. That's piece. right. Yep, I think Bill Larson has that piece, that's right. Mm -hmm. And look at this beautiful copper and calcite, no damage. Mm. It practically glows. It's so practical. rich. It's so rich with copper. It's, mm -hmm. it's spectacular. I love those. Yeah, no, me too. Me too. Really something special. The Phoenix mine. And moving along over here to California, look at this eagle's nest. They call this one the seahorse, and you can see why. It's mm -hmm. aptly hit. It's a famous piece. He had that at a museum for a while on loan, didn't he? Probably Different the Perot. Yeah. Uh, he, he had his large gold, which uh, is not here at the moment. Um, he had a different gold. He kept this one at his house. And mm. Oh, wow. He has a huge gold that he got from Wayne Light many years ago. I happen to like this one a little bit better. That's I love that one. Piece, yeah. yeah, the crystallization is just, it's fantastic. And it's very easy to anthropomorphize. Sort of Indeed. Indeed. Um, so you guys were just with MCP. They did the work. Hats off to them on the King of Kashmir. Yes. Um, this is the aquamarine that he got to, uh, over a decade ago. And the only thing that would make this better is it was absolutely gem with this color. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that deeper blue towards the bottom really makes the termination pop, right? It gives Agreed. that contrast within the, the crystal, and uh, I like that piece a lot. Yeah, I like the feldspar as well. It's got a little motion and play to it. That's a good uh, way of describing it, exactly. And then... Look at this. I, I call this piece uh, the Medusa. Look at the, uh, this is halite with selenite from Germany. I was going to call it Bullwinkle with those horns. <laughs> I like Bullwinkle. I like Bullwinkle even better. Oh, yeah. I love the late stage there on the, the, the halites, the golden sort of halos that's created around uh, Bullwinkle's face there. <laughs> It's a beautiful one. Nice large cabinet. Let's go over to this gorgeous little emerald here with quartz crystal. Great color on that. Yeah, look at the little jewels yeah. shooting off. Yeah. It's rare to get them with quartz. It looks like that bottom crystal that everything's perched on is rather robust. It's a big, large crystal. And then there's uh, some gemmy crystal right on the bottom as well. Huh. An interesting piece. Unique. You know the guy I got it from? He called it the Swiss Army Knife of Emeralds. <laughs> <laughs> because it has so many, it has everything going around for it. Uh, check out this Visby with Malachi. Uh, this was in the Phelps Dodge collection. He got three pieces from the Phelps Dodge, this being one of them. Luster's beautiful. It's not a little malachite, which is wonderful. Gotta love busy material. Me too. Now we're gonna move over to this cabinet.
And we'll start over here with this Petanera from the Grand Don pocket. Mm. Mark got, uh, he got a good example from many of the different pockets at Petanera. This one on a citrine with a beautiful little perched on albite. I love the wow. stepped colors. You know, it was transitioning from that blue, which contrasts great with the citrine. And then you've got this big bunch of bright green classic pedaneras in the back that really gives it a, a good visual movement, draws your eye. And also you know, the clarity of the terminal. It is all the pockets are so different that it's not sufficient to just have one pedanera. You can create a whole collection just on the one locale. It's so true. And so true. So he had he had probably six different pockets uh, represented and a fine example for most of them. Um, this being his grand on green, which is just it's a tremendous piece. It really it's beautiful, very eye catching. This calcite was one of five. Um, orange calcite on amethyst. So unique. It's really orange. It's not iron oxide staining calcite. It's just beautiful saturated orange. And it pops even more because of the, the purple from the amethyst and you've got that texture difference as well. That's a, that's a smoker. Yeah, I love this piece. I love this piece. It's possible we'll remove some of the amethyst at the top, but at the moment we're going to leave it as is. Um, Mark like had a, a wonderful. What's that? It almost looks like a crashing wave coming on top of the. Uh, oh, that's the, true. The, yeah. That's about to crush the about to crush the surfer. That's a great <laughs> description. Uh, Mark had a wonderful collection of tri-state, almost fifty pieces in total. Um, Luster is wonderful. This one's from Joplin with two calcites, a little sphalerite and some pyrite. So it's a nice example from this locality. Pyrite cubes from Spain. Mm, I love when they get multiple and they're sort of intergrown like that. I, I, me too, me too. Here's this, these mushrooms of uh, mangano calcite with a little matrix. There's four of them. It's like a brain. Beautiful piece right here. Kunzite from the Urica mine. Mm, the color is just insane. Yeah, position there on that C axis too. You really good. Yeah, you really need it too. Yeah, the color is just so stunning. It's an uh, eye grabber from across the room. Beautiful barrel. It's etched from Brazil. Love these etched barrels. They tell a very interesting story about the deposit they come from. Indeed. Acid etched barrels, and this is a gorgeous Chinese rhodochrosite, rhombohedral with associated fluorite. Mm. Again, a nice the, Yeah, the, the the preferential deposition on those uh, the right mm. top sides of those crystals also really make the the red stand out and gives color. You know, give crystal definition as well. Oh. Barry from Elk Creek, South Dakota. Really super gemmy. Just a lot of fun. It's got this elongated crystal here on the calcite. A lot of color right there. And, and great, great quality. I don't know if you can see the champagne in there. Yeah, the cognac, that's a rather. crystal that we see in that one. Very thick. Now, uh, here's baby blue and big blue. <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess which uh, is big blue. This is our baby. This is big. Big blue he bought in 1996 at the Discovery Store in Dallas. And it's a, it's a, it's a monster. This thing is really something else. 
It's a real museum display style specimen. It's got the purple phantoms and the blue and the blue uh, rim. I can really see how uh, deep purple that is in the core there. And you got those late stage almost um, freckling of that deeper blue at the, the, the end there too, that gives it that uh, surface texture almost, although it's not the true texture. That's right, Lauren, it does. That is correct. And baby blue, this was on Ross Lilly's show poster. I got this from Irv. Um, this was not part of the Pospisil collection. He's coming up next. His eye is just immaculate. Everything Irv has is spectacular. The phantoms in that are really cool. Yeah, oh, this is just beautiful. This one has a whole different luster to it. A wonderful dioptase on calcite. You got to love these. They're hard not to. Soon ad. Mm -hmm. Slightly different calcite from what, you know, a lot of times you see those uh, sharp roms and this is sort of that uh, more snow drift-esque style. It's just, it's a beautiful one. It's, it's got nice coverage. The crystals are a decent size. Now, Dylan, do we know when that came out of Sumeb? We don't know the exact year, but it was around when the heyday of when they were being found. Um, Peter, were you were you uh, in tune with the, the years that these were being found exactly? Mid seventies, I think. So yeah, yep, a little before. Little, my just time. a little before my time too, actually. Yep. So who who brought these in? Did we were was it Pros Prosper Williams? Or the he brought in some. The Zweibels brought in some. Um, sure. Clive Hewitt probably brought in a bunch. Look at this snow cone of aragonite with just beautiful luster. I, I think snow cone is definitely how you would have to describe that. Tasty freeze. I'm ready. <laughs> Looks like the best thing you could ever get out of Dairy Queen. <laughs> That's a fun ride. And then moving over here. This is Dylan. Sure. Back to that. Come in close on it. So that, and then uh, kind of uh, pan up and down so we could see the whole thing. Yeah, look at that chatoyancy on the top. It's just great. And then pan down the body if you could. This is from mm. Guilin, China. Such a sculptural piece. Yeah, it really is. It's beautiful. I love the chatoyance of the little micro crystal and aragonite on the top. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's clean as well. It's it's beautiful, nearly pristine. This has got a great story. Mark Kilbasso brought this out in the diaper he found it in, and he sold it to Pasta Sale in the diaper. <laughs> <laughs> I call this the diaper elm, but it's a it's a beautiful elmwood football on a matrix of sphalerite and two fluorite crystals. I love how the, the, the top fluorite there is perched against the, the calcite. And so you really get that snappy color transition. Yeah, I agree. And the luster is wonderful all around on all three minerals. It's like one of those Alexander Calder pieces that defies gravity with the center <laughs> of gravity up high and the the gorgeous base at the bottom. Well said, Peter. Well said. Mm. Uh, moving along, we got this Uricum morganite, two crystals from Brazil on a matrix with a little bit of associated tourmaline. Generally, you don't see them with two crystals. Or on matrix. And that's that's a the combination. Oh wow, it's gemmy too. Look at that. You can practically uh, yeah. really see those uh, your fingers behind. The phantom. That. Yep, you can mm. see the phantoms right there. It's a fun piece. Mm. Cool. Nice color. Nice rich, rich color. Lovely. 
moving along here. You know, this is an amazing way to do Tucson, I have to say. <laughs> uh, the fact that I get a snuggle every night with my wife, I agree with you. <laughs> well, you can't beat that, Brian. You cannot beat that. This selenite from Zaragoza was in uh, Luis Miguel's. This is uh, understandably the finest single one recovered. You can literally see the malachite perfectly through that. I mean, that's that's a you cool get, combination get, with the malachite in the background there. Yeah, you get this incredible prism effect with that. That is just mm -hmm. optically fantastic. This is a killer. I mean, this is a true killer piece right here. I wish you could see it in person, uh, maybe one day. This is just, it's, it's outrageous. Well, you're welcome to, to save it for your exhibit at Tucson next year, Dawn. Oh, there you go. That's a fine idea. Look at this. You put in that great case for Men Record last year. You can put in another one next year without any problem. We'll do something fun. Yeah, there's going to be some good rocks for the displays for next year. This is just a gorgeous velvety seashell of malachite from China. I just love the way that it just kind of, it's like one big wave. It's incredible. Uh. You have the kind of coronas of the uh, chatoyancy. I guess corona is a bad word to use these days, but I mean, you get what, corona. I, what I'm saying. The little uh, Yep, crowns. No, it is. It's, it, it is. The crowns. Yeah. The, the, the little eyes in a way. They're these, yeah. it's a beautiful play of light. And it's very three dimensional, as you can see. Uh, Here's another, this is a museum specimen. It's a big Whoa. green tourmaline on Alba, very architectural, hard to capture how beautiful this is unless you see this in person. It really is a gorgeous piece. So, so the top crystal, I don't know if this is a, an aspect of the, the phone, but it looks practically, you know, the way that the light's catching it and I guess sort of the, the, the way that the crystals have formed, it looks practically chartreuse, like in terms of optical. It's a Chatoyant green, and they call this the black pocket. Uh, um, it's a Chatoyant green tourmaline with a little black. It almost looks like shoral out of the light, but you can see the size. It's, this is bigger than a basketball. It's, it's, it's massive. And he had this displayed at Yale. It was absent, the Peabody. Everyone loved it. <clears throat> the the way that the the matrix there kind of forms this almost igloo with the with the lower crystals sticking out of it is pretty neat i want to just talk about this rock right here just for a sec because it is the heaviest mineral i've ever lifted it takes two people to lift two two well able people and it's a giant massive galena crystal with with the with cal not the most beautiful, but if you were to drop this piece, it may go right through the center of the earth and come out the other side. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is ridiculously heavy. You'll break your back lifting that. Well, we know that Mark uh, was supremely <laughs> fond of his Galenas, so uh, great, very interesting piece. It didn't, the, this is he calls himself Galena Man, doesn't he, or something like that? That's right, Galena Man is his email. What a wonderful person, Mark is. Um, call this one the elephant trunk. It's from Bisbee. Oh, from oh, the that's Mountains. so cool. I love the little baby rosettes like sprinkled along there. Oh, that is a cool specimen. And you know, the color of the azurite is, is very, very bright. And you can see a little primary malachite in the back. Yeah, the, the, the color, the texture, the tone contrast there. This was, uh, this was um, also part of the Phelps Dodge collection. Mm. It's a nice considerate right here, a matrix, two beautiful crystals. Mm. Very lustrous on oh, the mica. Easily the world's best considerates that locality. Yeah, hands down. There's almost a little reddish coming through. Uh, 
which is Consider really, considerite can be red. Yeah, yeah. This is this has got a little transparency to some, to the tips of the crystal. So this is this beautiful ram's horn from Chihuahua. So aesthetic, just beautiful, just just so much fun. I love that piece. That piece, and it's a nice. long. Wow. It's a long crystal. Look at that. How you... Is that from the same pocket and zone that your your ram's horns from, Dad? Um, probably not, but it's from the same general part of the district. It's from the West Camp, one of the upper mines. This is an old one. He's owned this a long time. Mm -hmm. Again, he got that from Norma. Um, moving along over here. We have this big plate of Bessertine and Smoky Quartz from Tong Bay. Mm. I mean, there's the coverage of, of, uh, of quartz is really, of the, of the garnet rather. The color on those garnets is always just so st striking, especially with the, the smoky tips. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful piece. It really is a beautiful piece. And then here's a big old glove mine. Wow. Some large the, crystals here. And the edges have those, that nice uh, yellow that sort of gives those crystals a little extra definition. Nice fluorite from Ping Wu, um, uh, Mica. Uh -huh. And then this I call the Iron Man. This is an Orsneo pyrite with two arms shooting off. Huh. Look at that habit too. There's sort of the, the rounded aspect. Um, gives it a different, yeah. I want to say feel, but it, it has a, a distinctive character. Absolutely distinctive from that locality. That's just an unbelievable scarn system. I love this thing. It looks alive. It is alive. <laughs> Living green. And here's this Bisbee um, Vug, which is just spectacular. Also, for, that must also be from the PD collection. Yep, from Phelps Dodge as well. Yep. The the blue of the azurite is just such a true bright cobalt. It's not that deep blue that kind of goes blackish. It is just smack you upside the face blue. Hey, Dylan, could you get close to, into that so that we can see some of the azurite closer? That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, hold on one sec. Let me open up the cabinet for us so we could get in there. And that I will do. Oh yeah. Look at that. Huh. Hmm. This is a really beautiful piece. I mean, it's just tremendously pretty. The kind of piece that's really approachable to someone who maybe doesn't know minerals. It's one of those ones where you gravitate towards it because of the, the color and the form and the way that it sort of has almost a Monet aspect when you're far away it's sort of a teal color and then you get closer and you really see sort of the little points of color there. It is such a beautiful rock. Yeah really 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 pretty so it's so attractive. I like how you, you used Monet because it, it is almost a Monet. It's one of the best ones of these I've ever seen. Uh, moving along, we have this Veracruz, beautiful arrangement. Nice little bit of green in the background to set off the purple. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is. And especially with the, the clear quartz kind of forming this, uh, you know, backing to the, the purple as well, that very center there's that little teeny tiny one sticking up at the top and just 
drawing your eye through the specimen past the big crystal and sort of that larger, almost looks like a sceptered spray and then boop, adorable little guy up top. That's a cute specimen. That's a beauty, yep. This is a giant butterscotch elmwood on a little matrix, double terminated, uh, pretty rocks. Yeah, what a great color that is. Yeah, that's that rich, rich from, I think that's Cumberland rather. Open up the cabinets here. It's another big rock, of course. Mark loved his big minerals. Um, let's start with this. This is what they call true Carthage corners. Yeah. And you can see it on half an inch, almost three quarters of an inch into that corner. That's great. And you can see the zoning there mm. too when you when you kind of because they're so gemmy, they give you sort of this picture into the 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 specimen. Yeah. And it sits on a little matrix. You know what's really cool is uh when we saw Steve Neely's collection you you can uh he collects you know he's got the corners and the corners are actually you know sometimes the rest of the specimen will be etched out and then you've got those corners standing out there and such an interesting habit and the the contrast and the the way that it kind of gives you a little window pane inside there He got this in 1991, so he's owned this a couple of years. Yeah. Oh, Peter, Cobras. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> you know what, Peter? Mark wanted you, he actually specifically mentioned your name for this mineral. He said, I'd like Peter to have a chance at this. So this is the Cobra Calcite, also known as Cobra Heads. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. piece. Oh, I remember it from his collection. Very well. When were you last there? Oh, it's got to be four or five years ago, maybe even more than that. <clears throat> so I'll set this one aside for you, Peter. Okay. <laughs> You're going to have to twist my arm. You'll have to put it in with the uh, ram's horn from Sandy Olalia. Oh, uh, there you go. Yeah, this, this one is also has a living feel to it, the way the calcites are, oh, yeah. are flowing. It's got, a, it's got a great form to it. So Yeah, those cobra really heads, those, those cobra heads are really well developed. I mean, it's, it's, it's clearly from the same area as the piece behind my head, but it's a little bit tighter and um, whiter. This is an inosite, which is the opposite of that galena I described. It's one of the lightest minerals I've ever lifted. Wow, that no, must be a delicate piece. Very delicate and very fragile and very beautiful and also very rare. There were not many of these. Rob has a great one and there's another great one in China. This one has the hubeite crystals associated. It has Little this microphone. delicate aspect to it that I love, despite that sort of in juxtaposition to how large it is. Kelly mine smithsonite with this secondary growth here. Nice, That's beautiful cool. blue. That's a cool texture contrast there. It is. No, it is. Because this has luster and this has a, a, a mattish luster. Yeah. That's why he purchased this one, actually, believe it or not. That piece probably put some techie through school for two or three years back in those days. That's amazing, Peter. And here's this beautiful barite on fluorite from Illinois, Annabelle Lee as well. Mm -hmm. Very lustrous barite. These combos are so cool. Yeah, they are. Yep. These are like somebody hit a collection of fine miniatures with an enlarging ray out of a Superman comic book. It's unbelievable. <laughs> you know, uh, remember that article you did on Texas sized thumbnails? Yep. <laughs> These are Texas sized thumbnails. <laughs> um, here's this beautiful Los Lamentos Wolfenite with these butterscotch crystals on the, on the white matrix. This is almost like pumpkin. 
Yeah, they're, 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 they're very lustrous and very pretty. Hard not to love Los Lamentos. It's got a place in my heart, that's for sure. Yeah, Look at this. Uh, that's another locality you could put together an entire collection out of variations on from one pocket to the next and not get tired of them. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing, right, Dad? <laughs> it seems to be. <laughs> One rock at a time. Mm -hmm. Mangano calcite, China. It's a big, beautiful, beautiful spray. Another Unbelie Chinese mineral. Unbelievable under an ultraviolet light. And if you had one of those, those laser pointers, the 405 blue ones, you could probably write your name on that crystal and it would sit there and glow for a few seconds. <laughs> I'm serious. That's cool. That's very cool. That's very cool. That's the interactive display at the TGMS mm -hmm. show next year. You know, I, I, I bought my first fluorescent lamp recently because Mark had a couple of great fluorescents. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It is, a, it is a serious rabbit hole if you're not careful. <laughs> well, I, was I, think... house, I was at his house filming some stuff and he had a big sphere that was um, carved out of some material from, I think, uh, Sterling mine. And so we filmed that rotating and then we kept it rotating and switched on the UV lights. And it was such a cool transition to watch. Oh, look at that that's, ilvite. That's quite oh, a sorry. hedgehog. The hedgehog on the Stibnite is amazing, but also the ilvite that's on the, the, the floor or the, the, yeah. Sorry to yep. distract the hedgehog though. Mm -hmm. That's this was for the these are silly. Dylan, you're gonna kill me, but we only have three minutes left, so uh, wow, show us. Oh, that's okay. Here we go, then. I didn't realize <laughs> you were moving. All right, beautiful fluorite from Chris Wright. We all remember him, mm -hmm. yes, uh, old timer there. Linwood barite, you gotta love that. Um, this barite from the Parkside mine, I don't know of a better one. Uh, what a, what an outrageously beautiful piece. True cap, English uh, English classic, um, gorgeous Marenzi mine, just wonderful aesthetics. This has got the bitumen, the hydrocarbons on the bottom. This fluoride. Usually you'd take that off, but they didn't. One of my favorite pieces is this uh, buffalo shaped fluoride that Mark purchased at the China show. Mm -hmm. with the barites and the barites are so lustrous it's one of the better ones i've seen i happen to really truly truly love this piece and whoever gets it's going to be very 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 happy uh the x-factor tourmaline cruzero almost looks living i love that Two arms mm. this rhodochrosite from bulgaria from the hopple collection Um, where are we going with these Chinese calcites? Lin Wu? That's correct. Lei Ping, rather. Lei mm. Ping. And this is a giant blue fluorite from Yaogan Shin. Hard to capture the enormity of this piece and the quality. That is a monster. Yep. Great cobalt and calcite, super color. Needs to be mounted vertical. Um, beautiful aragonite, just so delicate and gorgeous. The flow is fairy. I love those. Yeah, this one's this one's particularly pretty. Um, here's a pyromorphite. Almost twelve. It's huge. You got this from Jim and Gail. Yeah, it's a I, wonderful I, piece. I love the flow that the crystals yeah. have. They seem to be moving to the right. Looks like seagrass under a under a current. Mm -hmm. Look at this pumpkin-shaped calcite. Oh, incredible! Um, hey, Dylan, we're kind of out of time, but I'll, I'll let you. Right. I'll give you minute or so to show no let me uh let me just uh 
turn the camera around here. And just say thank you to you all for hosting this and making Tucson happen. Well, Dylan, I really want to thank you for coming on the show. The things that you've showed, incredible as usual, and really appreciate it. Thank you for playing with Blue Cat Productions and believing in What's Hot in Tucson 21, the live experience. And so for all you viewers out there, stay tuned. We're going to be right back with our next guest. Take care.